I'm Gabrielle Soba. I'm a TV writer for Showbiz Cheat Sheet. And today we get to interview Michael Emerson, who possibly plays the worst and most evil villain on TV right now in the series Evil. So I have to say, first off the bat, congratulations on season three. It was jaw dropping every second of the way that I was watching until the finale. I'm glad you're enjoying it so much. <laughs> I think it's a pretty good show too. It is. So one of the things that I kind of noticed from the first season going into the third is that Leland is not the type of villain who is almost like afraid of his true nature. He's not trying to hide his mal malice intents, but at the same time, he's not wreaking public havoc and like destroying the world. But do you think that's part of the reason why Leland works so well as a villain in the series? Well, I, I do think he's at peace with himself and his mission. I don't know how he would characterize his mission as good or bad. It's just not everybody's cup of tea. <laughs> but I, I, uh, I, I like that about him and it makes, often when you play villains, you have to deal with their, their own self-recrimination and guilt and they know they're doing wrong. Leland, I think is a happy and dare I say, well-adjusted villain because mm -hmm. he's just, He's having a grand time, I think. And whenever one of his little plans gets uh, derailed, then he, he always has something else to move on to. He has a lot of irons in the fire and it, it keeps him busy and happy and he's a good improviser. So many of his plans work out. So one of the things I've noticed is that um, when he starts dating Cheryl, she you kind of think, oh, she's just this kind of rocker punk woman, a bit more like, independent but then as she keeps dating Leland it kind of flourishes the sense of inner evil but do you think Leland kind of put that seed in her or was he kind of unearthing something about Cheryl that she didn't know about herself that's like a chicken and the egg kind of question about evil and what influences evil I think Leland has a good eye for people who are wavering people that want something and they may be willing to give up a lot to get it. And so that's like putty in his hands. Then he knows just how to go to work because he has resources that other wicked people don't and he can make their dreams come true in a way. So that's the true. world is his playground on some level. And I think Cheryl, he, he knew what Cheryl was from the get-go. I'm not sure he expected her to turn into such a collegial partner and friend the way she has done. But at, at the time, he, he knew what she was about. And I think now she knows what he's about. They're maturing together in the yes. dark side. That is true. You definitely see like this very intricate, very almost interesting relationship that's not necessarily friendship but not necessarily romance, but just this common fatuation, I would say, with the occult yeah. and this kind of world darkness. But in terms of that, we know that your character kind of went by another name. His name was Jacob Perry. But the fact is we never actually see how he gets involved in the occult, how he gets involved in this kind of evil and darkness in the world. But like, how do you feel about not being, like fans not being able to see the nitty gritty backstory? I'm not an actor that worries over much about backstories. I, it, I don't really care if I know m my character's origins and stuff. I, I know the story that he told somewhere in season two, he told a story about growing up in Des Moines and being in the high school marching band. And one night when he sold the, his soul to the devil, but the way he told the story, it was kind of over simple and a little bit glib. And I'm, I'm sure there's more to it than that. So I, I agree. I think his backstory is up for grabs. I don't think we really know. I don't know that we ever will know. He seems like a character who is pastless and maybe futureless. He's just... He's kind of who he is at this moment. However he got made, he's something. <laughs> mm, that's true. 
That's very true because we also kind of see that in the way his character progresses in this supposedly grander plan and the fact that we don't actually know what his plan is. We kind of see the steps that he takes, like the missions that he has for himself. We don't see the big picture. But do you think at some point in the series, fans might get to see the picture at some point? I wonder. I, 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 I agree with you. It, he seems to go from battle to battle and we have no idea what the war is. I, I don't know what the end game is, the, the big goal. Mm -hmm. Un unless it is just to be a purveyor of mischief and a person who takes care of human resources for the demonic dark side. Because he does seem to be very much in the business of recruitment and making sure that all the seats in the demon chart are filled. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, what's it was, in it for him? I, well, the power, yes. the power that he has. Yes, it also seems like he's just kind of like the servant. He has no real title, no real like yeah. power in his own hands, even though he wants it. He's just the servant in the totem pole that in one fail swoop can be swiped out, put in with someone else. Yeah, but then but who, who does he answer to then? Of course, it, it's who like does he the, serve? Real, <laughs> the real big bad of the hell, or is there like multiple sub, -lay sub layers that he kind of is trying to get through to get to that higher level? I think we see in the show the suggestion that hell is far more highly populated than we <laughs> ever imagined. So yeah, there are tears, there's vast bureaucracy, and but he you know, he, he keeps saying that, you know, he keeps referring to Satan and Satan's work that he's doing. And I wonder if we'll ever meet a character that big mm. in the show. Or is it an abstraction? Is he just it could be. talking? It could he be. a lot it, of talking. Because it, it brings me back to like one of the most, um, for me, one of the most iconic scenes in the series is when he's having that therapy session with what is could be the devil, what could be something else. And to him, he's not afraid of talking to this kind of entity. He's not afraid to kind of almost yell or kind of raise his voice. And then all of a sudden he's like, you want action? I'll give you action. And yeah. completely swoops off the head, bathes himself in blood. And I'm just thinking metaphorically, what can this mean? Like, what can this mean to Leland to be able to do this? It seems like it was something that he put up with for the sake of formula or for advantage for a while. And then he just got bored with it. Like you, like you would get bored with your own parents or something when they were just too judgmental and too demanding. And he decided I'm checking out of this. And he, he, he did that by, he did that with their methods. Mm -hmm. That's true. But then I wonder what you think, if you think that because this show kind of plays upon so much about good versus evil, what's demonic, what's maybe scientific explanation or how evil a person can be. Do you think Leland is just truly evil or is he more manipulative in that way? Well, he's by by most common standards, he's a pretty, pretty terrible person. He, he is heartless and violent, all of that. Um, he has some redeeming features. He has a sense of humor and he has manners and <laughs> puts, he's willing to put on appearances and be sociable. So he's not monstrous or a rampaging thing. He's just, that's that's a good that's a good question. I and whether he has even a drop of the supernatural in him, I don't know. I haven't seen it. I don't think about it in the playing of the character. But although he does seem to have all the resources he would ever need at his fingertips, whether it's money or travel or influence or all of that. But then that may just be those may be just the perks of his association with the monsters. Mm, that's true because we kind of like see that in the sense that he just kind of magically manifests so many things that he needs to do to get the plan going like all of a sudden in season three he has his entire company full of workers yeah. full of people kind of slowly doing his like little minor work and it's kind of like 
it makes me just wonder if he actually is evil for evil's sake or if he's just kind of manipulative to a point he just knows how to get things done. <laughs> well, I, maybe the latter, because he, he does seem like an operator. He seems like one of those mm. hustler guys that you meet in New York City. You know, you meet, meet him at a bar and they got all these plots and plans and they can, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll evaluate you and then they'll figure out a way to sell you or your skills uh, to someone else or sell you on something, some scheme. He's like the guy you meet in a bar that says, hey, uh, me and some friends, we're, we're robbing a truck tonight. And we'd, we'd love to have you in on it. It's a lot of money and actually no risk for you. He's, he's, a, he's a tempter in that That's way. <laughs> I have met such tempters in, in my actual life. So I, I know it's out there. I, I, I know you could step into something really bad that you can't ever come back from if you're not sort of on guard. <laughs> I feel like that kind of plays a lot into kind of how this show is fabricated in the sense that you're kind of discussing good versus evil, but then also the fact is they're kind of unearthing the little evils that exist in the world, whether it's kind of the yin and yang of how things are, but then it's like there's always a little bit of evil in someone, no matter how much you don't want to believe it. And that's yeah. kind of like that, that concept, like you have those people that try to manipulate others into doing things for them, or they kind of convince them to do the dirty work for them. But what do you, is that part of the reason why you think the show is so good? Why people are so hooked on it? Because it's kind of breaking apart the conformities of religion and God and the devil. Well, I, I, th I think it's good because it's layered and because it's complicated and, and it's, I really do think it's for grownups. I, th I think uh, Leland, as a as an operative for evil with a small e, is kind of where he's at. And I don't. And I sort of I don't worry too much about evil with a capital E or good with a capital G. I'm 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 more into the micro units of behaviors and choices. And I think that's part of the charm of the show is that it, it brings us to this sort of landscape where huge forces seem to be pitted against one another. And, and yet it's, it's played out in the details. Every episode, there's, there's some detailed story, a real life story. How do those titanic powers play in the everyday? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's true because like, I find myself wondering that with every episode because there is that overall question is is this religion is this kind of some otherworldly presence or is this simply just a trick of science a trick of broken pipes somewhere that's causing some reaction right. so I think that's kind of what you went with with like Leland is kind of also like in the mix of it all because Leland is this person who just in one point of his life was normal, was this weird guy, weird kid who just had a weird backstory, but at the same time finds himself in that occult, but still exists within this normal world, what we would think it is. So it makes me wonder, like, do you think Leland will ever reach a point where he kind of breaks away from his ideals of the, like devil and the occult and the darkness? You mean, would he ever get to be a good guy? Will he? Is he? <laughs> does he have it in him to be good? This would this would make Leland laugh so hard. <laughs> and, then, and you know what he would do? He would agree with you and say, "I would like to get together with you and talk about this because I think that you, you're telling me something important. What are you doing next Tuesday night? <laughs> you know." <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, it was kind of chilling a little bit. That was kind of- Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's Leland, yeah. It's true, because you kind of saw that in the way that he manipulated the church into giving him an exorcism. And like the other characters, like this guy's nuts. This guy's cuckoo and crazy and he probably is evil. But somehow the church is just like, well, like give it to him anyway. Like, why not? Right. He has a way with language. He and does. it seems like he has some law training because he can, he can really twist 
a piece of text and make it serve himself, you know? Oh, I know. I think like when I first met like Leland, you kind of get this overpowering thing, like something's off about this guy. Like it's, he's that guy in the street who just like kind of like edge away from as you walk past him. Yeah. And he kind of proved that when he kind of creates his relationship with Kristen and she kind of, he kind of breaks away at her sanity and her legal matters and her psychology. And just like, you're not perfect. You're not this. I will break you entirely. <laughs> Or I'll just, I'll open the door that you wanted to open anyway mm. and help you step over the threshold. That's, that is true, because we kind of do see that with Cheryl. We kind of sure. see that. She always wanted more more darkness, more, more of the rough stuff, more late nights and sex and a little bit of criminality, you know, all of mm -hmm. that. Let's, Let's go steal a bottle of whiskey from a liquor store, you know that. And in the end, she does help Leland. She's like, she's in the city. Oh no, I work for a company that like does this and this. She's so happy. And in the end, she does help Leland kidnap Kristen's husband and do God knows what to him. And in the end, she's just, it seems like such a normal relationship between the two characters. Like Leland is capable of creating this normalcy in the darkness. They're just, they're pe two people who work together. <laughs> they're co-workers, it's fine. <laughs> That's right, co-workers. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so in relation to like the finale, the finale is what kind of left me so excited for the fourth season because I want to know what happens in the sense that Kristen has been on this journey to figure out what happened to my egg. And we kind of get like the rough route, like thinking, oh, it's in the woman, it's already being born, it's already this, but in the end, she's murdered horrifically. And we find out at the very cliffhanger, oh, Leland has your embryo. Like he somehow took it, he somehow has it. But like, what do you think goes on in Leland's mind when he looks at Kristen and goes, we're gonna be parents. Like I did it. I ruined you. Well, I think it, it, it must be a very satisfying moment for her because she's been mean to him for a long time. She hit him in the face with a high heel and she, she cut him on the throat with a sharp knife. And so, but she's still to him hot and fascinating. And he just, I don't know, he's, he's a little bit obsessed and he just wants to bring her down. It is. It's. It, I think it's such like an interesting obsession, like an obsession that kind of just slowly ebbs away at Kristen, of, like beyond what all the other stuff she's going through. It kind of like slowly chips at him. I think that's kind of the best way to describe Leland. He's someone who just chips away at your sanity, at your like questioning of reality. But it makes you quite, like you're also famous for another TV villain is Benjamin Linus in Lost. So going into evil and playing Leland, did you have to like go back into that character or did you just want a completely new blank slate, different ball game for Leland? You, you don't want to play the same character twice, but it, there's, there's little danger of that because the writing is always going to be different and the, mm -hmm. the situation, the landscape of the show. But in, in this case, it, it was fairly easy because I thought, oh, uh, Benjamin Linus was a sort of self-tortured character with guilt and misgivings and family issues. And Leland is just having a ball. He's, he's <laughs> playful, it's fun. Most things go his way. If they don't, he has a little tantrum for a minute and then he redoubles his efforts. He has so many irons in the fire that no one little setback can re really ruin him too much. Mm -hmm. So what are you hoping for your character going into the fourth season? Like, it will, be, will it be the same him just having a mission for mission for mission? Or is the supposed birth of this weird demonic child kind of changing his plan? Or is it just part of the bigger plan? I, I think he's improvising like he always does. And he'll be, he'll, he himself will be curious to see how this plays out. What advantage to himself can he make of mm -hmm. there being a child on the planet 
that is half him and half Kristen. What will that child be like? Who's in charge of that child? Mm. Kristen's not. She gave those <laughs> eggs away. So what's that? Man, what's, what's her What's her relationship going to be like? To and if he's even telling the truth. Mm, that's true. <laughs> that's a good point. Oh my god, that's right. Because he is a master liar. Yeah, he kind of warps things around. What a great zinger to look at her at the at the uh, shower and uh, lay one on her like that. That'll make her sleepless like nothing else. <laughs> oh my god, I think it would make everyone sleepless knowing yes. Lulin was going to be like a father to this child. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> But then like, it makes me question like, cause you do see prior to that kind of reveal, you see these demons around this very weird fetus looking yeah. entity. But then you kind of see Andy walk into that and you see Chris, um, Crystal's, like Kristen's therapist walk into that. And I'm thinking like, what, is this just like a metaphorical manifestation of what is to come? Or is this kind of just a placeholder for the actual child? I don't know. They seem to be parallel images or metaphors, if mm. you will, of an unholy conception. Are yeah. is 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 that a vision? That that demon mass or that demon? What should we call it? Adoration of what must be. A, a new figure, an, a, a small rising star in the demon galaxy. What's what's going on with that? And who gets invited to that particular show? Yeah, I it's guess, literally and, like the end of the world prophecy almost. Yeah, and people that are in attendance like Andy and Dr. Boggs, who can they tell about that? No one, they're compromised. No one would believe them. <laughs> I wouldn't believe them for sure. <laughs> so you're telling me an alien baby was born? Not even alien, just demonic and like related uh, to him. No, I don't uh, want to believe you. But then it kind of brings in the question. No one truly wants to believe that someone like Leland exists or something like yeah. the unholy exists in the world. Like they're mad at like ignorance is bliss kind of scenario. Yeah. Yeah. There's enough obvious badness in the world. I, I don't, we don't need to be imagining that demons are walking among us or their servants. And yet. The show's just eating it up and kind of making people feel that yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> it's stimulating. It is in a way, because it's kind of like the giant overall concept of religion like you're basically questioning religion people's kind of increase is this real is a person next to me even human are they yeah. something else are they yeah. yeah creepy i don't know <laughs> <laughs> what what can you tell me about season four like any like teasers anything that would that you think we're gonna are gonna like hook fans like need to watch it need to keep an eye on it this is for the long run no, I know nothing. I know nothing about nothing. it, except it'll probably be good and I'll be excited to read the scripts <laughs> as they get written. But, and I'd have to say also, I'm, I'm happy not to know. It's, it's, it's more fun and more surprising. True. Very true. I feel like it kind of ruined the fun, isn't it? To yeah. kind of know everything. I don't want to think about it for the next three months. I'll think about it the week before we shoot. <laughs> and that'll be fine. <laughs> if you were to like pit um your lost character benjamin versus leland who do you think would win leland 100 percent, just leland <laughs> yeah because he's not he's not self-torturing mm. he that's true he, and he would stay with it to the end benjamin linus might drop out of the match at some point well yeah i think like benjamin is a bit has a bit more sense of humanity like human yes, instinct that's right. than leland that's right yeah Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and he thank you, Gabriella. Thank, thank you, you so much. It was <laughs> nice talking to you. You as well. I look forward to your character in the fourth season. Thanks. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs>